I V M. You've tuned into a show called Mr and Mrs Binge Watch and you were expecting a spoiler free episode so there are many many spoilers on this episode kripya dhyan dijiye Hello and welcome we know we've taken a really long break i mean 3 weeks is a long time but yes in the new year in 2020 this is our first Mr and Mrs Binge Watch episode Ooh. Why are you that doing was, what I normally I, do? Yeah, that was, and also it was just me. There are five other people in the studio. I thought they would like back me up on they that. They don't give up. Like, nobody f- else applauded. <laughs> so only we are excited about like, and this three week break. People are like, what three week break? You were gone. हमको पता भी नहीं था तीन week का break था. पता भी नहीं चला. But yeah, the first episode of the new year, and uh, essentially what Janice and I have been doing since the new year began is watching this really critically acclaimed, widely watched, uh, much loved breakout hit of the year called Friends. <laughs> <laughs> We have just been binge watching Friends. I don't know how the I'll hell that happened. I it. actually felt sick in the first few days of the New Year. And first few days, no. Okay, you I was sick on December thirty first, Jan first, Jan second, Jan third. This is true. So I was sick through the New Year, and basically, I didn't want to watch anything that would take up too much of my mind space. So I was like, "What is a show that is like dal chawal or like amazing khichdi?" Well. friends and so i started binge watching friends randomly and then of course guha joined the bandwagon because he had to yeah, and now before we knew we've just like we've watched like two or three seasons all over again for no uh, good reason i have not watched two or three but yeah i basically started watching around the time ross meets emily in season 5 and i was like <laughs> okay now i need to at least watch it till the end of the wedding because that's where chandler and monica are going to hook up and ross is going to say rachel at the altar Uh, I was going to say oh in case you guys haven't watched friends like spoiler alert now I was like agar tune friends nahi dekha to kyu sun raha hai the podcast friend references nahi matlab andaaz apna apna references ke jaise hai matlab if you don't know ke matlab teja main hu maa kidhar hai then i mean what are <laughs> yeah. you even doing with your life <laughs> But uh, essentially, no, no. You might be doing something very important. It's okay. We are not judging, not really. But if you tune into this podcast, we're kind of judging. Sorry, yeah, we are. So actually, Janice and I have gotten really lazy with our watching habits in the sense that what we have been doing since a year began, and it's been about roughly three weeks. Is a we've been obviously watching Friends because uh, yeah, Janice was unwell, and then one thing led to another. We ended up watching two seasons. We have. Just now started watching season six of Brooklyn Nine Nine because we are gari Indians. We are gari Indians who get the season only when the entire season ends up airing in the US. It's the same thing. Yeah, it's like Bosch ka season five finally a gaya. Finally after, after I mean Amazon months. India, thank you for like, finally like releasing Janice it. Like Janice has caught up on four seasons of the show before the first one has so even landed. I was so excited. I was like, by the end of the fourth season, मतलब Bosch is pretty much tied it all up together. But season five है ही नहीं. Yeah. America में मतलब air wear सब कुछ हो गया. Yeah, but there's still a shitload of stuff we used, we need to watch. Like for example, we are yet to really start watching. Watchmen, so that's something that's on our list, and we're going to start doing that really, really soon. We've also sort of been toying with the idea of watching Messiah because we've heard interesting things. Yeah, about Jan the show. first is when the show launched on Netflix, but a show that we went back to watching, something that we'd kind of given up on, and we thought we should finish because you know it's a new year, and you should try and finish all the sh- shit all that you got losings. going in 2019 was the morning show. And it's interesting because I mean we started rewatching Morning Show after maybe a five week break, and I remember we stopped watching it after we saw the fourth episode or the fifth episode, one of the two. And in fact, if you go back and you listen to one of our earlier podcasts, Janice and I did a really, uh, you know, detailed discussion of all the shows that were launched on Disney Plus, whether it was Apple uh, on Apple Plus, sorry, <laughs> uh, Disney Plus, I ain't here, bro. On Apple TV Plus, whether it was Dickinson or whether it was C or whether it was for All Man. kind and i remember at that time we had said about the morning show that apart from the cast which was brilliant uh, which had like jennifer aniston reese with a spoon and steve carell giving great performances in the first 3 episodes uh, and the fact that it had an extremely topical a uh, setup which which essentially is the entire me too movement unfolding against the backdrop of a newsroom scenario there really wasn't much that had you know sort of um uh, that had us like going wow about the show uh, beyond a point so i genuinely felt and i remember thinking that i mean in in terms of the fact that the morning show was apple tv plus's first big sort of prestige show uh, at least 
halfway through the season i felt like there was a lot uh, that that was missing uh, but our opinion changed right janas yeah i mean i think uh, you know the first three episodes were interesting uh, the pilot was great but then the next two episodes were kind of like okay um what's happening here also you know the, there are things that to love about the morning show and then there are things that i've grown to sort of not love as much like i feel like throughout the season we don't get a clear idea of where the anchors both Bradley Jackson played by Reese Witherspoon or Alex Levy played by Jennifer Aniston what their own personal take is on the me too movement and what's happened with Steve Carell's character you also don't get a sense of you mean much. after the season also you didn't get no, that no after sense. the first three episodes ah, right okay. and then even when we went back and we watched the fourth episode which is you know Ani and I stopped watching the show after the fourth episode we took a five week break and we were just like you know the show is sort of it's going all over the place there's a lot of what about re without actually coming to the point like for me for the longest time i think till the 7th or 8th episode i was like what is this show about is it about Alex that is Jennifer Aniston's character now having to re sort of redo the morning show on her own terms by bringing in a co-anchor like Reese Witherspoon is it about the me too movement against Steve Carell and you know how that impacts the news place and a really tight group of people working together because see what we have to understand is and i worked in the newsroom for a really long time you t- t- kind of tend to become like family especially when you're mm. producing working on one show mm. you do become like family you do begin sure. to sort of take up for each other whether it's your anchors whether it's your producers whether it's your editors whoever right so how does that impact a newsroom but i couldn't put my finger on what was this show about it just sort of felt like it was going through the motions and of course they have a great cast and clearly the makers know that which is why we every now and then you'll get a brilliant Jennifer Aniston moment or an interesting scene with you know Reese Witherspoon or an interesting like that that scene you remember that scene with Steve Carell and uh, you know the guy who sort of it seems like that filmmaker Woody Allen Woody Allen sort of uh, representative on the show yeah. that scene I mean blew my mind it's still one of the things that I think about from time to time just how well they sort of captured the conversation between two men who both been accused of being predators and what their thinking is like Yeah but I think you uh, you know you hit the nail on the head in a couple of points firstly I think the morning show in general you know you don't get a sense of what the show is really about for a very long period of time I think it has an extremely fascinating setup because a you have this uh you know newsroom setup which is very specific to it being a morning show newsroom see we have seen shows before this that have had newsroom setups right whether it was sports night whether it was uh, uh newsroom both created by sorkin um you know and we've seen films like spotlight and all the president's men and all of that and newsroom is a really dynamic sort of a scenario to uh to create interesting situations and you have a great set of actors already and really interesting characters for example the character played by mark duplis mm, the character chip. of chip who's this hyperactive producer who knows that his line his job is on the line at all times is a very interesting character by the way chip i mean mark duplis plays his character spot on because if you've ever met a television producer especially for a long running show at one point you feel like that's a guy or that's a girl like a lady or a man who was in charge you feel like that's the person who knows better than everyone else and yet they're also the one who's sort of carrying the weight of almost every person so if for example your sound guy fucks up it's on that guy yeah. if your anchor reads the law wrong link it's on that guy so he plays that character so well of this very like fragile and yet someone who knows it all yeah and then there's of course the network uh, you know sort of uh, not the president but like second to the president character uh, played by billy crudup who's a character called uh, called cory uh, and apart from the main anchors played played by aniston and reese with a spoon it's got an a very extra you know it's got a very interesting ensemble of producers and all of that so i'm saying to begin with it's an interesting setup i also remember saying this after i watched the first episode that i feel that the show tries really hard to be like a sorkin show which means fast talking repartees and you know humor uh, wit and all of that but the problem is that the plot of the show meanders for a very long period yeah, of time yeah. and a hallmark of sorkin's writing was that every episode of his in you know with all the various strands that he opened up the characters that he focused on all the laughs and the jokes and the dialogues and everything he never lost track of the plot of a show mm. uh and i feel that the morning show unfolds on an extremely uh singular plot line 
which is basically about a man having you know been caught in a me too scandal and how that basically throws the entire newsroom into some sort of an upheaval mm. and the interesting thing that happens is that somebody like a bradley jackson who's this uh, you know sort of who's not from the same world gets thrown into it and then you want to see what happens with the characters of bradley and alex which is anister and reese with a spoon and what happens with them after that the problem is that the show then just keeps roaming around in circles mm. keeps coming back to the me too story the but other problem not as frequently as you thought it would sort of make sense yeah because like i said it meanders a lot even when it's going into their private spaces like for example you saw jennifer aniston's a personal life yeah. to some extent Reese with a spoon's family or personal life you saw in the first episode and from the time she comes to New York City and takes on the job it's like she has no life outside of the workplace mm. um so but apart from that to what i missed the most was that they were so obsessed with the mid story uh that the Steve Carell story the Steve Carell story that about with me too that they really they, you know you have 10 episodes one hour long episodes uh and there was only that one episode i remember where there are there is a bushfire taking place uh in LA and these guys basically in california and these guys go to basically cover that and that was an interesting episode because for the first time we saw them actually put together a show based on a breaking news story yeah. now i'm not saying that you have to follow a newsroom kind of a format where every episode has to be a major news story breaking and how the newsroom i understand that the morning show is more about the personal lives and the characters than the news itself but i'm saying that i really miss the fact that there was such little news on the show i 100% agree with you because for me also all of the bits that were most interesting were things that happened within the newsroom now this is not necessarily what i mean you know by saying a breaking news story but i liked it when i saw like you know the anchors coming together to do either whether it's the weather report whether someone's reporting from somewhere live or whether you like you said you know they've sent Reese with a spoon and Jennifer Aniston's characters on what they call a remote a remote is when you send your anchors out of the studio mm-hmm. you send them to a real life location they did that in one of the episodes also with Steve Carell like when they did a throwback episode yeah, yeah, yeah. of Steve Carell and Jennifer Aniston's at characters at the Mandalay Bay hotel at the Mandalay and Bay see, shooting and see both of these were references to real life news stories Correct. one was the LA fires, fires that took place last year and then Made of course popular the, of course because Kim Kardashian and Kanye West's house got burned but okay and uh, and of course the Mandalay Bay shooting was something we also watched horrifically live. i mean Horrifying. It, it sort of and, and it unfolded on twitter and all yes, kinds of social media yes yes but my point is that there was such little of that happening and i feel but here's how i look at it right so what do i get out of the show mm. i get a bunch an ensemble of great actors to begin with yeah i get a bunch of really interesting characters that have been built up over season 1 now i'm hoping that you have a universe that you can exploit over several seasons but you need to get your act together you can't let your writing be that uh you know spread all over the place indulgent actually indulgent totally. and you need to now crack an crack a format where also i don't think that season long arc story arc works on a show like morning show with beyond a point in the sense that it can there can be a story anchoring an entire season of the show for example the mitch episode here but uh you cannot have that becoming the focal point of every episode because it gets really monotonous and boring after a point of time and it's also unfair to some of the other characters i mean after a point i felt like all the great breakout moments were happening with jennifer aniston if you think about it yes bradley jackson as in reese witherspoon's character gets to carry the story forward because without her you can't have all those internal politics you can't have all that you know using people against each other happening you can't have all that poli- that you know that newsroom uh, interesting moments where you know people are like oh what is she like do we trust her do we not but i just felt like all the great moments went to Jennifer Aniston. Yeah, I also All the meltdown happened with her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All the, I, I know, think the, hers was the most fascinating character, most important. Hers is the author back role yeah, when you yeah. think about it. No one else has got that big piece of the cherry pie as much as her on this show. Yeah, show. I also feel and I also read a really interesting article that was done about the fact that how the casting of Reese Witherspoon irrespective of how great an actor she is is completely off mm. uh big, with what the show is trying to say because the idea if the show is really trying to be progressive and trying to say that now it's time to break the shackles and you know sort of take things in a new direction you are doing it by essentially hiring another woman that's white 
and you know sort of looks a certain way who who's who's a conventionally pretty looking uh, woman that's that's one of the opinions that's floating around but for me more than that i mean of course that's a very valid opinion for me i just generally felt reese with a spoon was miscast because i feel like reese with a spoon now over a period of having delivered so many performances has a certain aura around her as somebody who's you know sort of got it together uh, and it's like i felt like if you cast somebody like a jennifer aniston who's supposed to be this matriarchal uh, more seasoned anchor it would have made sense to cast somebody who's a slightly got a fish out of water personality so that i would have also been invested in her arc as to how she goes about becoming the person that she does by the end of the season the problem with reese with a spoon's character i felt like it had no arc she was as like she had moments of self doubt where she wasn't sure if she was cut out for the job but it didn't work for me because it was reese with a spoon saying those lines maybe also, also because i felt like if you had maybe a new actor or a young actor turning into you know the just that her scenes would have become so much more interesting just like Jennifer Aniston scenes were so interesting because her casting i thought was bang so on so you're saying actually the fact that we've seen Reese with a spoon in so much so many films so many shows not just works that. against the character not here because that. you want a newbie kind of feel not just that also because Aniston and Reese with a spoon then there is no contrast that you can create beyond a point of course there is an age difference but there is not that big an age difference and actually it's not even about age yeah. it's really about acting chops or it's about how lo- i mean just the fact that i feel they're two similar actors who are in fact they played sisters on friends yeah, I, mean, i mean we just watched that episode two days ago so we actually watched the episode where the one with rachel's sister aka reese with a spoon and we watched the finale pretty much i think around the same like two, time 3 days yeah. apart so it's kind uh, of weird where we're like i hey. i think i think so for me one of the biggest takeaways of the show and i know that janice is really dying to talk about that finale because i think what really makes the morning show the reason we are talking about the show today and the reason we're recommending it because that, it's a recommendation show yeah, is that after having gone back to it after a 5 week break we actually saw the better episodes in the second uh, you know sort of lot because 6 and 7 good episodes 8 9 10 are excellent episodes yeah. especially that finale and without spoiling it for anybody like they take some really brave decisions which uh, might seem outrageous might seem unbelievable to some but it really comes together nicely because purely of the performances that uh you know delivered by both aniston and with a spoon i mean for me i think that finale of like i i'm 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 a very like easy viewer to please i feel like if you give me a great finale it's it's a sim- similar thing we talk about movies as well if you give me a great ending that wraps up all the you know various threads of the story or all the loose moments together really well i'm very forgiving in the sense that i will walk out and say but it's different for film. a film i agree okay, okay. because with the show also yeah. because i remember i'm investing a lot no, of no, time just, on I'll watching the show for example when uh, to give you a, a reference the politician another show we watched last year where we kept saying kya ho raha hai yaar beach season mein matlab we had lost interest it was going all over the place but the finale comes in and suddenly you save the show and now we're interested in seeing what you do in season 2 this is exactly what happened to me in I the morning show is better than the politician of course i mean i'm that's just a reference about how a finale can sometimes save a show i get that but my point is that i agree with you on the film aspect of it i agree with you on the fact that a lot of times when you're watching a film that you don't entirely love huh. but if it has a great third act it kind of makes up for the rest of it because you are consuming it in a one and a half two hour format hmm. i don't feel the same way about tv shows so i need to be very clear that while i think that the morning show finale was fantastic i don't think it redeems itself just purely on the basics basis of one episode because i mean you can't expect me to sit through nine episodes of something and then deliver me deliver something no great. no completely but fair. the reason i think morning show has potential is because of the fact that they have a very interesting setup to begin yeah. with and it has great characters and a really good cast so what episode 10 of the show which was fantastic does is sort of makes me realize the capability that the show has if it i mean it would really truly become a great show if it can give us six of those episodes next season and not just one mm. uh so that's something that i feel is really important 
the for me the reason the finale works on so many levels is because throughout the season the number one problem i had was what are you doing with the whole me to allegation against your main anchor that i think is resolved beautifully in the finale i mean there's some you know there are lots of things that they keep doing through the season where you're like this is not important this is not really necessary but once you see the finale a lot of it makes sense why they've built up certain aspects of the show the second thing is through the season i was also waiting for moments you know because even though you see reese with Spoon and Jennifer Aniston together they're not really together they sort of almost forced to be together because of circumstances they show them softening up you know opening up to each other but they're still not fully invested in each other it's the finale that again breaks that you know entire moment as well where now you know that in the season 2 these two are almost going to be like sisters they're going to be rooting for each other and whatever they do they're going to be doing it together because it's taken an entire season of setup and many many sort of incidents for them to now realize that we've got to work together otherwise this is not going to work. Yeah. So these two things for me No, but that also makes me go back to that earlier point that I just feel that as two actors playing off each other, I don't see that spark in the Aniston with with a spoon combo. I enjoy the show when they're playing off other actors like their scenes with Mark Duplass or their scenes with Billy Crudup, but off each other I feel like they're both really good actors, great to see together, but there isn't any chemistry that they have i don't get that mentor mentee feeling when the two of them are together but i think that's also because with a spoon's character is not written as someone who's loyal or you know has a lot of gratitude or any of that she's no, shown as, she's, not she's shown as she, a rebel without a cause very she's often she's also not written as a uh, as a upcomer in the sense that she's just written as someone who's been around for as long as say aniston has but it's just that she's been in the shadows or she's been doing less interesting work uh, but also i mean the morning show really is uh, one where Jennifer Aniston showed what she's truly, truly capable of. And I'm really glad about that. And I really hope that she gets a lot of uh, award love and critical acclaim moving forward. Mm. Uh, and and more varied roles than the one she's played before that. Yeah. But having said that, I think Janice, since this is a new year mm. uh, and we can revamp the show as many times as we like. Because, well, it's our show. We can do whatever the hell we want with it. Uh would be a great idea if we start picking, say, a scene stealer of the show every time we talk about a new show, right? Yeah. Uh, so who, according to you, was the scene stealer of the morning show? Well, for me, without a doubt, Jennifer Aniston. I mean, you just spoke at length about her. But for me, I feel like, like I said earlier on the show, she has all the best breakout moments. She has the best meltdown moments. She has some of the best lines. And I just feel like, you know, for someone who's grown up on Friends and we've seen her as this slightly ditzy, blonde, you know, funny chick, this puts her in a very different new space, really, really exploits her acting chops. And she shines. I mean, this show works because Jennifer Aniston works. There's no other character on the show who has as much prominence. And she's literally carrying a lot of the narrative on her shoulders. So for me, without a doubt, the scene stealer is Jennifer Aniston. Yours? Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, I think Jennifer Aniston is fantastic. But when you talk about scene stealer, like the one character who I love and I keep waiting to see on screen as the one played by Billy Crudup. <laughs> Corey. Uh, Corey, I think also because Billy Crudup is just so friggin' enigmatic, right? Uh, his dialogue delivery, he's got that drawl that he speaks with. And he's this really... Uh, charming but smarmy and kind of a cool guy uh, who is a soft no uh, at all you know sort of smooth talker and I just I just feel that Billy Crudup has such great screen presence and also you know Crudup's character has been played in one note throughout the yeah. show almost until that one really important season where Mitch with Mitch where he basically shows Steve Carell's character his place yeah uh, and then you see a different side to him and I feel that just as a character you know when you talk about characters that you watch over several seasons of a show I just feel like Billy Crudup the actor and Corey the character just has so much potential also you know uh, I know what you mean because I feel like now if I were to see Billy Crudup in real life I would be like that's you're supposed to be Corey you're supposed to be wry and smug and Mr. Know-it-all at all times yeah yeah also I mean uh, he just won the best supporting actor drama at the Critics Choice Award so he's already he's, he's already being recognized for the performance uh, any other additions that you want to do in the new year yeah I think we should do a wow moment like you know a wow moment a moment that really blew our minds like for me for example again because I loved 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 that finale so much 
it's that moment where um, you know Jennifer Aniston and Reese Witherspoon's character are dealing with a really really difficult story a story that could actually jeopardize their entire careers the network's entire you know future and they're constantly having this moral ethical battle between i mean you can they're not vocalizing it but you can tell it's playing on their yeah. mind and then suddenly there's something that happens in the finale which we won't necessarily give away are we giving it away no but that happens and then a switch and, flips a switch flips and Aniston has a break down on live television now this is the kind of shit that goes viral i mean if this were to ever happen to any anchor in any part of the globe you would be watching it on your phones but it is brilliant the way she breaks down and i love it's how it's a meltdown yeah, it's, it's a complete, a, it's a complete meltdown. meltdown on national television where she's walking up and down in the studio the producers don't know what to do the cameramen don't know what to do and reese with a spoon is reading out links very nonchalantly because someone has to carry on the damn job and then at one point when aniston is like breathing hard and she just can't deal with it you know with a spoon just looks at her and says are we going to do this or what and then that's it you know the next few moments are amazing so for me that is the wow moment of the show so my wow moment actually came in the finale as well but it wasn't the uh, the last scene the climax it was really a scene where hana who was one of the subordinates of mitch at work who had had a sort of a relationship with him uh, and you know which can be seen through the prism of the fact that so for mitch it was just uh, an innocent sort of a hook up uh, and that's interesting because you're you know also dealing with how uh, not just victims but also the perpetrators of sexual assault view a certain incident but for her who is the victim and you know you see the events of the scene in an earlier episode but you then have hana narrate the same mm. uh, and you know mimi leder the director of the show who's well known for having directed the leftovers before this spoke about how there was an eight page scene and it was a really really difficult scene to shoot because it's literally a victim you know sort of relaying an entire incident to the Reese with the spoon character uh, and you know it can be an extremely emotionally draining and difficult and also plus you need to keep track of all the lines that you have to deliver yeah. and she said that on the edit a very interesting technique was employed which is something she employed in leftovers as well which is that they just kept cutting to snapshots of their entire hotel suite where the yeah. incident took place uh, and it wasn't really like they weren't cutting to it in a in in like a very noticeable way it was just like really quick it's like almost like how memories are meant to be and i found that scene to be extremely effective while watching it and then i obviously went back and when i read leder's interview i was like wow that really made an impact and i thought that scene sets up the episode perfectly for everything that happens later correct because that scene plays out so beautifully you're like things can only get better from here i mean you cannot it up after this because you've already now taken us to this level of expectation which is why we were saying it again and again that in a lot of ways the finale sort of at least for me redeems the show to a great extent but we're also going to be doing a binge meter from this week onwards so anirudh what is our binge meter on the good morning show so i the good morning show no, the morning show i feel the morning show is uh, is like a three course meal where the starter is excellent and the main course is kind of average but if you stick around for the dessert then then yeah, you're going to have an amazing experience then you're going to have a yeah baby moment yeah, this baby is why moment. i want to watch season 2 yeah so if so if if while watching morning show you start losing interest midway know that the dessert's going to be great yeah and if you enjoyed this podcast then you can tune into many many other podcasts on the ivm network you can listen to us on the ivm podcast app or on ivmpodcast.com you can of course also follow us on our social media handles we are at ivm podcast on twitter and instagram and if you want to write in with questions feedback or any random observations to anirudh and me well i am at janasek85 on twitter and instagram and anirudh is at aniguha on twitter and instagram is it too late to say happy new year ah uh, well it never really is until i mean what is the last date that you can tell happy new year till i don't know i think let's like just... what if you've not met somebody till february will you still say happy new year no i think That, first twenty no. days of the year. Ha! So we can definitely say. All right, guys. On that note, Happy, Happy New, New Year. year. I hope you enjoyed that show. We'd like to thank our sponsors this week: Intel, Storytel, and Cambly. And let me tell you a couple of things that you should check out this week. On the Pragati podcast this week, journalist Rohini Mohan joins Pawan to discuss Assam's unique history, how the NRC was rolled out in Assam, and what a nationwide NRC might look like. On IVM likes Antriksh Abbas Rutika talk about their pop culture resolutions for this new year. 
On Ganatantra Saryu and Alok are joined by Dr. M. K. Raghavendra to explore how the politics in Indian cinema gets influenced by politics itself. On Tapri Tales, Madhuri talks about the state of our mental health in the midst of political and environmental crises that are surrounding us through her story, A Day of Anxiety. On States of Anarchy, Hamsuni looks at seven major global affairs stories from 2019 and looks at the way forward in 2020. Thanks and keep listening. Do you wish you were smarter? Well, so do we. But the next best thing? We could make you sound smarter. And to help you with this endeavor, we are Simplified. A podcast uh, that attempts to break down the complex world around you with a little knowledge, a lot of poor jokes and a ton of random trivia. Episodes out every Monday. On the IVM podcast app or wherever you get your podcasts. See ya!